Greetings guys, gals, non my pals and welcome back to another video. A few days ago, uh, I asked Kat to help me find some video ideas and some things to talk about. And she stumbled upon this Instagram account who posts a bunch of reels about being a trad wife. And so naturally, I had to sit down and talk about her. I have to watch some of these reels and we have to discuss it. Um, and as I was planning this video and going through her reels and writing notes and things, Chad Chad uploaded a video that also include her reels. So I'm glad that we're all on the same page and we all need to take a look at this madness and talk about it a bit. Um, so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do today because they're just so weird, you know? like. There's some really weird trad wife content out there that I just like do not understand. And it just baffles me. Like there's nothing wrong with being a stay at home mom. Like I don't have any problem with that at all. If that's what makes you happy and if that's something you're able to afford and achieve, good for you, go off, do that. But there's a really weird way they go about it on Instagram and it's so, so strange. And I think that it's worth discussing. So that's what we're gonna do today. But before we get into it, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Raven. I appreciate you and your support so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvy cat or click the top link in the description. It starts at as little as one pound a month and it means a lot. So with all that being said, let's dive in and take a look at some of these reels. Controversial opinion. If women were more traditional, we would have lower divorce rates. See why in caption. And the caption says, I wholeheartedly subscribe to the idea that embracing traditional roles within a marriage can play a pivotal role in reducing the chances of divorce. By prioritizing traditional values as a woman and wife, such as serving my family, fostering a peaceful home, pre preparing nourishing meals for my family, spending quality time with my children, respecting my husband as the leader and provider of our home, and loving the Lord, we're building the bedrock of a content and enduring marriage. Research and experience have consistently shown that these traditional values and practices contribute to relationship stability and long-lasting marriage. I know others would argue that divorce rates were lower in the olden days because you couldn't get divorced, but I would beg to differ. Women respected their husbands and honored being feminine. They thrived being keepers of the home. They loved serving their families. Unfortunately, we have completely strayed from that as a society and now we have unhappy marriages, depressed women and divorce rates of being over 50%. I strongly believe that if we embraced the old traditional values, we would have a lot more successful marriages. What are your thoughts? Let me tell you my thoughts, ma'am. Firstly, you hit the nail on the head. I was about to say that divorce rates were lower because we couldn't get divorced and research actually does agree with that because as soon as divorce was made, like something that women were able to do, the divorce rates went up. Fucking shocker, surprise, surprise, when women got rights, they didn't want to be abused anymore, so left their partners. <laughs> divorce rates are higher for that reason, the fact that we can, and also because People started expecting more out of their relationships, you know? Like people, women in particular, because women often file for divorces, they're more likely to file for divorces. Um, women, you know, want to be respected. Um, and a lot of the time we're not, <laughs> you know? Like women bring a lot to the table and they expect men to bring a lot to the table too. They want their husband to help them out. They want their relationship to be fulfilling. Um, and a lot of the time it's not. And it like sort of dies out after a while, you know, or they become unhappy. So they end the unhappiness. And like, sure, maybe if women embrace traditional values, relationships and marriages would last longer, but I wouldn't say that they're happier. Like for some people, yeah, sure, maybe. Maybe some people love to be homemakers. Like you love to be a homemaker, which good for you, that's fine. But a lot of women don't find that fulfilling. You know, like that's the thing with all of these trad wives is they're like, there's nothing more fulfilling than raising a child. There's nothing more fulfilling than doing all of this. There's nothing more fulfilling than having the home ready when my husband gets home after he's worked a long day. Like for you, that's what makes you feel fulfilled. Me personally, I can't imagine a worse hell <laughs> than being trapped in my house, having to cook and clean all day. That's just not something that I have any desire to do at all. That's not, that's not, some, that's not for me, you know? Like, I hate that I have to work so much in order to just live. Like, you got, you got me there. I'm also not a massive fan of having to, like, work all the time. Um, but I definitely don't want to spend my entire life, like, serving someone, you know? And they will always come back with the, like, well, you're serving your boss. I'm my own boss, so I'm not doing that. 
either. I don't really serve anyone but myself. I don't answer to anyone. It's my own life, you know? And I know a lot of people don't have that luxury. But regardless, like, I feel like doing the same tasks over and over and over every day would personally be too much for me. That would get to me. Um, and that's just not for me. And it's not for a lot of people. A lot of people don't find that fulfilling. And so if they're in a marriage where they are expected to do that and they have to do that, and it's not for them, it's not a fulfilling thing to do, then they're gonna wanna leave the marriage, you know? And it's better to end it and have everyone be happy than it is to stay and be unhappy. I don't think it's the good thing to do to sacrifice your own happiness to benefit a man, you know? Like, I don't think that's worth it. Sure, a marriage may last longer if you just stay and endure being miserable, but then you're miserable and I'm not calling that a successful marriage. A marriage that lasts a long time doesn't mean it's a successful marriage, you know? Like, that's not the same thing. Length and success, that's not, that's not comparable. That's not the same thing at all. The girls who understand raw milk is better than oat milk. Making sourdough is better than buying bread. Having babies is better than being childless. Being traditional is better than being progressive. Tracking your cycle is better than the pill. Submitting is better than being controlling. I have a question, a serious question here. What is it with these trad wives and sourdough bread and raw milk? What is it? <laughs> what is the grip those things have on them? Because we'll get into it more soon. Um, but she has a lot, a lot of stuff about raw milk and sourdough. And so did the last trad wife we talked about, Gwen the Milkmaid, a couple of months back. So much about baking sourdough and drinking raw milk. What is it? What, where did this come from? What is this death grip that raw milk and sourdough have on these trad wives? Where did it come from? Do I have to stop eating sourdough? Do I, do I look like a, is that like a dog whistle? Is me buying sourdough, like sending the wrong signal? Because like, I fucking love sourdough. I love sourdough. I don't want to stop eating sourdough, but like, if it's becoming like this thing that's explicitly for like these conservative anti-vax trad wives, I don't know if I want to partake, you know? <laughs> That aside though, I have a lot of, there's a lot of things about these points. And the one that surprise, surprise gets me the most is raw milk over oat milk. Because I find this whole concept so funny because a lot of the reason they say they're against like oat milk and alternative milks or whatever is because they have lots of additives and they're not natural. And it's so funny because like, you can make your own oat milk. It's literally just oats and water. <laughs> Get some oats get some water, put it in a blender. Now you have oat milk. And you're gonna try to tell me that that's not like a whole natural fucking liquid. Like that's way more natural than cow's milk straight from the teat, which one has a lot of bacteria in it. You can get really sick from drinking raw cow's milk. Also cow's milk's not really designed for us. You know, it's designed for cows. So it's not even natural. Like most people's bodies are lactose intolerant. Like we aren't designed to consume the milk of other animals because it's a bit odd, right? So oat milk is just overall much better for you. <laughs> and if you're making your own oat milk, there's no additives at all. And I'm sure that you are not drinking raw milk. I am sure that you are drinking milk from the supermarket, which has gone through a whole process to remove like blood cells and a whole bunch of other stuff. It has to go through a massive process in order to be safe and sellable for consumption, where you can make oat milk really cheap, really easy, and it's got like fiber and protein. You know, it's like, oat milk is arguably aligns with your values of being like whole foods much, much more. So I'm just putting that out there. And then like, I've always the, the tracking your cycle over the pill thing. Like I understand the appeal and this is something that goes for like a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to be taking hormones and such. And like, I totally get that. Um, but I just personally don't think it's that reliable. Like so many of us have irregular cycles. And I think that encouraging people to exclusively track their cycle for pregnancy purposes is kind of dangerous. Um, if you're going to be doing that, then you also have to at least be using other forms of protection like condoms because, or like the diaphragm or whatever, because I don't think that 
tracking a cycle is a safe enough viable option, you know? Like, risks are involved. <laughs> I find it so interesting, the crossover that's happened at some point where it used to be considered like, you know, like liberal leftists, like hippies and whatnot were the ones who were like only eating like whole foods and natural foods and were anti-vax and anti-medicine. And it's taken such a twist to now being the complete other way around. Like it used to be like people who were very, yeah, more very liberal left-leaning that were against all of these things and wanted to be all natural. And now it's switched completely the opposite direction. Um, and that's happened in the matter of only like a few decades. And I find it so, so fascinating to have watched happen. Like where that flip happened and where there's that like crossover point where like, you know, the circle, but you're like on both ends of the circle. When you're so far right, you're left. And when you're so far left, you're right. It's very interesting where you like come full circle and you both become each other. Um, and that's one of the points where that sort of happens of like, if you are all natural, anti-medicine, anti-processed food, all that sort of stuff, like you're either, you're extreme on either end. Um, and I find that amusing. It's very funny to me. I used to be really into politics, but now I just relax when my husband tells me what to think. Girl, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> that was so embarrassing. And that's so sad. Imagine just like forfeiting your like freedom of like thought for a man. Like, what are you doing? How do you go from caring about something to like not caring at all and just letting someone else control your entire life? Like that's wild to me. It's such a privileged position to take as well, being like, I can just forfeit all of my beliefs and let this man tell me what to do because nothing affects you because you get to live your life of privilege where like, no, nothing is really gonna make a difference to you at all because you make like a good income, you know, you have like white privilege, you're cisgender, heterosexual, like, middle class, upper middle class, like your politics don't make a difference to you. So you can just give them up, um, which is just such a privileged position to be in. And like just stopping caring about things and allowing a man to make all of these decisions for you is so, so wild to me. And like something that I think is so interesting is that all of these people love to say, you know, not her necessarily, but like they, they always say that like men have a hard time doing all of this, you know, they have a hard time carrying all this weight. And I'm like, yeah, and I feel like them having to make every decision, including your political beliefs, that's a decent amount of pressure as well. Like I feel like being someone who has to make every single decision, that would be exhausting. I personally cannot make a decision to save my life. I am a terrible decision maker. If someone told me I had to make every decision, for myself and my partner, I would lose my mind. That's not something that I'm capable of doing. And I know that a lot of people are similar in that regard. Making decisions that involve other people is a difficult thing to do. We are so focused on teaching men how they should treat women, but when do we start teaching women how to treat men? Literally the day we're born. <laughs> That's when we start teaching women how to, teach, how to treat men. Our entire lives we're raised how to treat men. We live in a man's world, you know? We are raised to accommodate for men. We are raised to sit down and be quiet so men can talk. We are raised to be polite and good manners while boys will be boys, you know? Like that's that's everything. We are taught from day one how to treat men. The reason why men are being told how to treat women instead of, is because we don't treat boys how to treat girls. You know, that's why. We don't teach boys how to treat girls, so we have to tell men how to treat women because they never fucking learned. While we were so busy learning how to treat them and make room for them, that's why. That's why. It's because of how much we have had to sacrifice in order for them to sit at the head of the table that now we need to be like, okay, here's what we're not gonna fucking do. And then we have to teach them how to treat women. That's why. It's really not difficult to figure out. Like, come on, come on girl, use your head. I'm teaching my daughter that it's perfectly acceptable to depend on a man. That being a homemaker is the number one career she should strive for. And that serving her husband and bearing children will be her greatest joy. Your daughter is three. She is three years old. And you are telling her now that she should depend on a man and that she should strive to be a homemaker and bear children. That is so gross. That is so gross. I, like, let kids be kids, but I'm going to tell my daughter that her entire value revolves around 
the choices she makes as an adult and that has to be putting herself last. You are teaching your child from day one that they are the lowest priority. That is so fucked up beyond belief. You need to be teaching your child that they can look after themselves and that they are worthy and that they deserve love and that, you know, they have to wait until they meet the right person and they have to know how to take care of themselves and be strong and not accept just anything that's given to them. Teaching your daughter from the age of three years old that she has to depend on a man is going to get her into some really horrible relationships really young, yeah? It's a terrible, terrible thing to be teaching your child and telling her that her existence revolves around having kids and like serving her husband. That's so horrible. I feel so sorry for this kid. That's so awful. Like, yes, teach your kids like valuable skills. Like you should be teaching your kids how to cook and how to clean and how to take responsibility um, and make decisions. But that's not all you should be teaching them. And you should be teaching that to people regardless of what their gender is. Like th those sorts of things need to be taught to everyone. Um, and it's just absolutely so devastating that you are prioritizing that is what you're teaching your daughter above like, I don't know, the colors of the rainbow maybe. <laughs> that her imagination is important and to like let that flourish, write stories, teach her things about herself and her place in the world that's not revolving around a man, especially when she's a child and you shouldn't be rushing her future. What, she's gonna get married like 20 years down the line? Use the 20 years between like now and then to like, you know, work on her and not how she's going to be the extension of another person. That's so gross. That's so gross. Being a rebel in 2023 means drinking raw milk, eating red meat, going out in the sun without sunscreen, having a large family, not trusting the government with your health. Again, with the raw milk thing, that's always been like a rebel thing. You're not meant to drink. There's a reason that milk goes through a whole process. It's because it's not good for you. It has like E. coli and a bunch of other gross stuff in it because it comes from the udder of a cow. <laughs> They're not, it's not clean. And it's not really made for human consumption. Like drinking raw milk is, it's dangerous. It's not good for you to do. Eating red meat, also another thing that's not great for you. That, that's, that's the thing. Eating red meat is bad for the environment. It's bad for you. And then on top of the, you know, environmental impact and the health impact, a lot of people don't eat red meat because of moral reasons of like having empathy towards animals and realizing that it's unnecessary to kill animals for food. Going out in the sun without sunscreen. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, this person lives in Australia, by the way. This is an Australian woman, which, you know, I couldn't go this whole video without mentioning that she's Australian because that's obviously very, very important. But she lives in Australia and I don't know if you know this, but Australia and New Zealand have like the strongest UV rays like some of the strongest in the world. Like in summer, um, the UV index gets up to like 12. If you go outside for five minutes, you will get sunburn. I'm from New Zealand, right? Like you just spend the entirety of summer with a sunburn nose. It's like, it just doesn't go away. You have to apply sunscreen regularly every few hours. If you're outside for 15 minutes, you will be red and you will peel. Like it's, it's so, so strong. The sun is so dangerous. And like the risk of skin cancer is incredibly high. Everyone gets skin cancer. Getting skin cancer removed is like a casual conversation. Like it's everywhere. It's a massive problem. So you should wear sunscreen in most places during summer, you know? But at least when like British people or Americans say this, it's like you can kind of get away with it a little bit more. I've lived here for four years. I never wear sunscreen. I've been burnt like three times. Um, in Australia, you absolutely cannot fucking do that. Please wear sunscreen. Oh my God, especially for the love of God, put sunscreen on your child. They lived in a van for a while, like 10 months traveling Australia and they went to the beach every day. I really fucking hope you're putting sunscreen on your kid. I really hope you're putting sunscreen on your kid because whatever chemicals or whatever you think is in sunscreen that are dangerous, 
what the sun does to you is so much worse. And these people will always be like, well, they never used to wear sunscreen before. Yeah, and people also fucking died all the time. I don't understand when people are like, but they haven't done this for hundreds of years and everyone was fine. No, they weren't. No, they fucking, they weren't. And also there wasn't a hole in the ozone layer all that time ago because we didn't have so many fucking cows. Like, <laughs> oh, the sun in especially Australia and New Zealand was not that strong. You didn't need as much sunscreen because there wasn't as much methane gas being produced because farming wasn't such a massive fucking issue. There weren't any cars or anything like that. Like the sun was less strong. They didn't need sunscreen as much. And skin cancer and shit still existed. People just fucking died, you know? Like, come on, wear sunscreen, please. I get so much hate for being a stay at home mom, but while you're working a full-time job you hate, I'm picking out sourdough at the markets on a Monday morning. Um, excuse me, but I thought you said you made sourdough. I'm pretty sure just a few minutes ago, we decided that making sourdough was better than buying bread. So what are you doing in the market? What are you doing in the market? Buying bread? I thought you didn't do that. I thought you shamed people for doing that. I thought, I thought that that was a bad thing that we don't buy bread. So what are you doing? Stop being a hypocrite. You can't buy bread. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> sorry. It's not, that's against the rules that you set, by the way. So I'm sorry. As cool as this fucking is, I'm obsessed with the sourdough wheel. I want to go here. Where is this? It's in Australia somewhere. I'll go, like, tell me where it is. I want to go. I want to go pick out sourdough from a fucking wheel. That's so sick. Are you kidding me? Anyway, though, you're breaking the rules. You're not allowed to buy bread. You have to make bread. Trying to figure out how to make all my friends quit their nine to five jobs and buy 20 acres where you can live off grid, grow all our own food, homeschooling our kids and making sourdough. Well, I know how you can do that. You just need to like win the lottery, like a really big lottery. And then maybe you can do it. Maybe then you can buy some land and some houses um, and all that. It's, it's possible if you win a ton of money and then they don't have to work either. That's kind of, that's kind of it. If you want to convince people, you kind of need money because we live in capitalism. But I do find it so funny because kind of what you're suggesting and what all these people always end up suggesting is like communism. <laughs> They're like, I wanna live, you know, with just a like small community of people and we all just work together. We grow our own food. We like teach each other's kids. We do all of our own services and we never owe each other anything. We just work together in this little community and live our own little life communism <laughs> like that's living in a commune in a community that's literally and these people are like fuck communism we're capitalists i love capitalism and then their ideal life that they always describe is literally communism it's so so funny to me it's so funny to me how often they do it. And this person specifically hasn't like ever expressed being capitalist um i'm assuming based on everything they've said and like compared to everyone else I make videos about like this. Like, it's just so funny, regardless, all these capitalists and all these traditionalists and stuff are so, we love capitalism. And then my ideal life is communism. It's fucking hilarious. It just always goes to show how little they actually know about anything and how little they care to learn. They just know they hate us. And so therefore they hate everything that we suggest, which is very, very amusing. I have finished going through all of the things that I saved, which was quicker than I anticipated. So it's been a little bit of a shorter video, but hey, you know what? That's fine. All of my videos have been a little bit shorter recently. It's just how it's been. Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed. These are always fun to look into, aren't they? Um, don't forget to leave a like and a comment and subscribe. Over 60% of you are regular viewers, but are not subscribed. So if you are unsure that you are subscribed or not, do check and subscribe if you aren't. I appreciate it greatly. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Harry, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Anoli Like Cannoli, Elias, Apollo, Taylor is Trying, Boston, Chris, Amelia, and Anu. I love and appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvycat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos today early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes, you